Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And here I have set up my next project. Now this project is another plain weave project. Um, so just for a little bit of accent, I have uh, warped a stripe in this. Uh, this is warped at 10 ends per inch. And this is just a uh, knitting yarn. It's uh, Lion Brands Wool Ease yarn, and it is a number four medium. So it's probably like a, a DK weight. Um, for those of you who know the yarn weights of knitting yarn, uh, but it's it's a wool acrylic blend. It's pretty inexpensive. I think it's like three and a half or four dollars per skein and the skein has 197 yards in it. Uh, so I worked up about uh, two yards on my rigid huddle loom and what I'm going to do with this is I am going to make a um, handbag and what I'm going to do is the outside will be the woven part, the inside will be a cotton fabric and that will support the yarn because the yarn is fairly stretchy um, as most knitting yarns, yarns are. So that will create a support for the outer shell. And then it'll have just a, a cotton uh, fabric handle on it. So let's go ahead and get started weaving. So the first thing that we're going to do is tension the warp and pull the heddle to the front. I'm going to start in the down heddle position and this is going to uh, let me spread my warp. So I'm going to pass the shuttle through and grab that tail and then we will um, put the weft yarn all the way down to the bottom and then put our shut put our heddle in the up position. Pass the shuttle through without beating and then back into the down position without beating and pass the shuttle through one more time. And this will let us spread the warp uh, pretty efficiently. So notice I've made a Z pattern with the weft yarn. Now we can pull all that down. You gotta kind of support the front of the loom. And I have a warp that is spread perfectly. Now we can go ahead and start weaving. So I've sped this up, obviously. I don't weave that fast. So I measure the, uh, how many picks per inch I am getting on a regular basis here, the first few uh, passes, just to make sure that I am getting the right set. So then we can just go ahead and weave along. So now that I've woven a few uh, inches, I'm going to inset a, another crosswise stripe of the green to match the uh, vertical stripe that is in the warp. And I don't need to um, split the plies at the end, but I go ahead and do it anyways. Um, it makes a nicer, nicer product. So I did a time lapse with this one because watching me weave is kind of like watching paint dry, but uh, you get the idea. So this was a two yard warp. Invincible. 
then at the appropriate point at the other end, I am going to put in another stripe of the green. And again, I'm carrying the white or the light colored up the side. I didn't cut it. And we'll split that ply and tuck it in and finish up weaving the uh, balance of the weft. So when I do the end, I'm going to uh, hem stitch it because it will hold the weft yarn uh, secure, even though I'm going to end up cutting that off uh, for my project. And cut all the tails and cut it off the loom and then pull it off the loom. I secured the tails on the other end before because I wanted to uh, wet finish it. So I just put it in a uh, hot soapy bath in my sink and we'll squish it around, get it nice and wet. And because this is an acry mostly acrylic with a little bit of wool in there, I don't have to worry about it felting. Um, I can be as, in fact, I'm trying to felt any wool that is possibly in there um, to make it hold together because we will be cutting into this fabric. So we're going to let that set for, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, and then we will come back and we will rinse it. All right, we've got it uh, set for a while. I have rinsed it once and this is the final rinse. And I'm gonna pull it out, make sure all the soap is out. And then, um, yeah, it turned out really nice. So we'll go ahead and get as much water as we can out. I'm wringing a little bit, but uh, you don't wanna like wring it really hard. I just want to get a lot of the water out as much as I can. And then you'll notice the towel over on the counter. Um, I'm going to, this is a nice big heavy bath towel that uh, is kind of worn out and stained. So I use it for my uh, weaving and dyeing. And I think I'll roll it up from the other end actually. So get it kind of flat fold over the balance of the towel and then roll it up as tight as you can and uh, squeeze as you're rolling. And this will get as much water out of the fabric as possible. So go ahead and squeeze it. It's kind of hard, but so then you unroll it and it's a, it's a lot drier than it was. Um, I'll go ahead and let this uh, dry uh, hanging and then we can work with it. Hey there weavers, welcome back. Today we have the weaving project off the rigid heddle loom. So this was woven at tens, 10 ends per inch, 10 picks per inch. And um, it was probably woven a little bit tighter than 10 picks per inch because I wanted a nice firm uh, fabric. But if I didn't want to use it as a bag, I could use it as a scarf. But we're going to use it as a bag. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we have our um, woven fabric here, and 
I'm going to line this with just commercial uh, cotton fabric from the fabric store. So I've done some um, prep work here. I took two pieces of cotton fabric that are roughly the size of the bag that I want to make. Uh, a little bit smaller, maybe a half inch smaller, um, because this is the interior of the bag. I have uh, sewn the two pieces together. Uh, I sewed the bottom together except for about an eight inch gap here. And I boxed the corners so that my bag will basically have a bottom. So when my bag is sitting, it's got a bit of a flat bottom. Now this bag is going to hold my laptop. So I made a uh, quilted padded insert to go in the inside and just divide the bag in half. I didn't go over how to make this, um, but if you, you know, know how to make bags, uh, you can totally do this. I also made two fabric handles. Um, now, you'll notice that this um, material looks a little mottled, and it's kind of a batik that I experimented with in my own dyeing. So it's not just a uniform color, it's more of a batik. Now we will work with the um, woven material. So what I decided is I'm going to take and I'm going to fold the material here and have these two stripes line up. And then my bag is going to be going to be approximately 20 inches or uh, 22 inches wide. Now this line, these two stripes over here, I want these to line up with each other exactly. So this will be one side seam. Um, I will cut this material off here. This will be a second side seam. And then this will be the top. This will be the bottom. And uh, the bag interior will be joined at the top and it will um, be folded over. The handles will be sandwiched in between the inner and the outer layer. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to make sure that these two uh, stripes line up perfectly. So I'm going to line them up. And I can see down here at the bottom they're lined up. And then I'll line them up at the top. And to make sure that they're lining up along the entire length there, I'm going to take quilting pins and I will just pin both layers together right along that edge. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to look and see where those pins came through. So on these two, they came through perfectly, but on these two pins here, they're slightly offset. So I need to kind of adjust that. So we'll take those two pins out and I need to go that way a little bit. And we'll just try it again. There. 
All right, so now all my pins are on that green line. So I know these two stripes are going to line up perfectly with each other. So I'm gonna leave those pins in. Now to prep this, I have sewn a line of thread um, across here so that when I cut it, it doesn't unravel. I did that on this piece and on this piece. Um, there it is right there. They're really hard to see because it's a light thread on a light uh, background. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut in between the two stitching threads that I made. And just go slowly. All right, there we go. Now, that will not unravel. Uh, now, I'm going to flip this over and do the other side. Find my stitching lines. There we go. All right. Now, so those did not come out quite even, but that's okay. Um, it doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do is I will stitch a seam along uh, here that is uh, probably about a quarter inch from uh, the edge here. And then I will do the same over here. And then I will um, stitch along the bottom. Now I'm also going to box these corners and that will make the bottom uh, just like on the interior uh, section, it will make the bottom so that it's kind of flat. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I uh, have so I've zigzagged along this area, and I realize it's kind of hard to see. But I've zigzagged along this area that is going to be cut out for the boxing. And now I'm going to do the side seams and the bottom seam. And that, to do this, I've installed uh, the walking foot on my sewing machine. So we'll go ahead and push this over a little bit and get a little more room here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put in... Put in like a 3 8 inch seam along here and I'm going to, all right, there we go. So the walking foot has a set of feed dogs on also and uh, it will make the top layer and the bottom layer feed at the same rate um, and it, it keeps it from making the uh, fabric kind of squish out um, on on the top layer. So we'll go ahead and put in a seam here. Remember, we're only going down to where our boxing is. And then when we get there, we want to backstitch. Okay. 
And then we will go over to the bottom. We will begin where our boxing is and end where the boxing is on the other side. And then back stitch. All right. Now we can move on to this side seam. Now we can um, take out the rest of the pins and trim the seams and the threads and then uh, cut out our boxes. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we have the box corners and we're going to go ahead and cut those out. Um, being careful not to cut through our stitching. That is um, keeping the thread from unraveling. All right. And I'll take this one. Okay, now we can box our corners. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to line up the side seam with the bottom seam and flatten it out like so. Now, I zigzagged this uh, side seam because it kept wanting to unravel, um, even though I had stitched it. Uh, so I just decided to go ahead and zigzag that whole seam. And now we're going to um, go through the where the stitching is on this seam and make sure we come out where the stitching is on this seam, which we're not lined up. So we'll just move that over. There we go. And then we will come up the same way. All right. And then we will stitch along that opening and stitch that closed. Okay, now we'll do that with the other corner also. Okay, so now we will go ahead and um, stitch across this uh, seam here and across this one, and then we'll have our corners boxed. Now we're going to go all the way to the very edge out here. I'm going to use my stiletto here and just kind of help things along. I'm going to back stitch all the way off the edge of the fabric and then back on. it over this hump the pin out of there so I don't run over it Right, 
now I'm going to um, clean up that edge a little bit uh, with a rotary cutter and then we can mount it to the um, inside of the bag. Okay, so we have our uh, liner here and I've got it with the uh, outside out, the inside is in, and I've uh, placed the handles where I want them to be. Now the handles need to be on the right side and inside. And I've pinned them uh, about where they go. Now we're going to take our outer bag and we're going to turn it so that it is right side out. So this one is right side in, this is right side out. And we're going to put these right sides together. So the outer bag will go inside the inner bag. Okay. And then I'm going to line up the side seams. And I'm going to use clips to clip that in place okay and these little clips are great uh, for sewing um, especially uh, for handwoven stuff I use them all the time um, now we will take this side seam and put a clip on it and maybe even another one just to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to okay now i'm going to um Clip the outer bag and the inner bag along the edge here um, all the way around and I'm going to be kind of easing the uh, outer bag to the inner bag because it is a little bit bigger slightly um, so we want to kind of distribute that fullness over the entire bag Okay, so now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and uh, sew around the perimeter using a 3 8 inch seam. Okay, so we left this uh, slot unsewn in the bottom of the bag so that we could turn the bag right side out. Um, that is the point of doing that. Otherwise, there's no way to get it turned right side out. So you just pull the outside in and then you've got the outside and the inside and then you just um, push the inside into the bag. And once you get that in, okay, so now that I have the two halves um, sewn together and it's uh, right side out, 
and I'm happy with uh, how the interior fits into the outside, I can go ahead and pull the interior back out and stitch up this uh, opening down here. You can see how I uh, folded over the um, seam allowance already and we'll just go ahead and uh, clip that together and then sew very close along this edge with uh, the brown thread and it will um, you won't even be able to tell that it's in there uh, since it's down at the very bottom of the bag. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Trim off the threads. Now the last thing that we need to do is to run an edge stitching around the top just to keep the uh, interior and the outer uh, shell from rolling over each other. Let me get this in here. There we go. Um, so we don't really want it to be doing this. So we're going to run an edge stitching um, right along the top here. And because I have a light color on the outside and a dark color on the inside, if I used the brown thread, um, it would show on the outside, which might look okay. Um, but if I use a light thread, and it would show light on the inside. But what you can do in a situation like this is you can change your... Um, top thread or your bobbin thread to match whatever is on the top or the bottom. So we have brown in the bobbin and I'm going to sew this on the outside. So I will just change my top thread to the light colored thread and then you shouldn't be able to really see um, either one of them very well. This is just a little trick that I've learned over the years of sewing. So I'm just going to start here at an edge. And I'm going to, normally I would edge stitch very close to the edge, but I really want um, this edge to not roll. So I'm going to stitch a little bit further in. Um, I'm going to use a, a quarter inch. I have increased my stitch length uh, a little bit. Um, I normally stitch at a 2.5 on this machine and I am stitching at a three on it for the edge stitching. So we'll go ahead and go all the way around. have it. All right. So you can see that uh, you can't see the stitching except for, you know, where it's kind of indented a little bit. Um, but you can't see the color of the stitching on the outside. And then on the inside, it is fairly inconspicuous also. Um, so there we have our bag. So we have our bag completed here, and as you can see, um, it's a good size. It will uh, fit my, my MacBook in there nicely. It's got the padded um, divider in there so that uh, my computer can be protected, but I can also fit um, my files in here and grab this and just take it with me. Um, once it has some things in it, you can see that it's got kind of a flat bottom and the sides uh, are shaped so that it has kind of a boxy look. 
and I think it turned out pretty nice. I like the uh, green striping on it and I'm glad I put those at the top and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching me make this little bag and I've got a couple more scraps here left. This is actually a fairly big size scrap so maybe I will make a case for my iPad uh, in this one and um, this could be a little cell phone case. Um, yeah, so I never waste any of these scraps. Uh, if nothing else, I can take these and I can combine them and make um, like a little scrappy uh, quilted um, something or other, or even um, if I put several different things together, you could make a garment out of uh, scraps of your hand woven. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel, and I wanted to thank you all again for watching and happy weaving.